I couldn't just leave it as an intellectual thing. For me, I, I really had to believe I was being called out of the world, out of the thinking of the world. I wasn't going to, I didn't plan to, you know, have a monastery or, you know, I thought of all the potential ways that this may play out. This was not it. <laughs> Somebody told me years ago, you'd be sitting out in the middle of a snowy canyon in a monastery, I'd say, yeah, cuckoo, you think my life's going that way. I am, I've got other plans. But, you know, you tell God your plans and that's what God laughs at. You know, we always have these ideas of how our life is headed. You know, if, if I look at, I mean, if we went around and I asked you all, did you think that you would be living in a spiritual community? How, how many of us even start off thinking that we, that's a possibility? It wasn't in my mind at all. When I would be there with my dog Chipper crying and going through all the healing of letting all this unconscious stuff up and he was, she was licking my face and, you know, healing. I wasn't thinking, we'll get all this cleared out and then I'll go find my spiritual community. That wasn't in my plan. Yeah, that was, that was absolutely the opposite. This is absolutely the opposite of what I thought I would ever be doing. Because I really thought you know, even though the Course talks about you can't go home without your brother and, you know, your brother, your brother, your brother, I'm like, I'm moving out in the middle of nowhere. I'm getting as far away from people as possible. I'm going to meditate my way home, right? And so it's like when this started to happen, I remember Jason said to me, well, don't you want to live in community? And I was like, are you kidding? I don't want to live in, why would I, why would I want to do that, you know? But the cool thing about it is the Course of Miracles is awakening through relationships. I mean, it is a path of awakening through relationships. We cannot get, we can't get past that because it's a fast track. I mean, like Lila was, Lila was sharing, everybody that comes here, you know, they come with these ideas of what it's like to be here. You know, they have their, the kind of a, a concept in their mind about a monastery or whatever. They get here and after a few days, they start to see that they have to start exposing these thoughts. They're their thoughts that are wanting to come up and out. Uh, that have been hidden and pushed away, judgments, you know? So we start to see ourselves. I don't ever see you, I see my mind, you know, just, just laid right on top of you. And so we get to start to bring it back. It's like, but did I ever, no way, did, would I have ever, ever chosen this, right? But it was like, it was the fastest way, and I think that was the calling of my heart. Just, just show me, show me. Uh, like David says, give it to me straight. It's like, all oh, right, I'm willing. Oh my gosh, am I really willing, you know, to live in community and to expose these thoughts and to start to look at my judgments. It, it was intense. But then the authentic experience starts to come in. That's when the authenticity starts to come in. Not like some sort of spiritual concept. It's like, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is what the, 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 you know, the Course and Jesus is asking us. It's like this non-compromise, this non-compromise. It's like I used to hear those words. I had no idea what it meant. And so, yeah, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to really actually do what the Course is asking us to do. It takes a lot of courage. So, no, I don't think. And in fact, most everybody that comes here uh, that goes really deep into this and stays for a while are people that have mostly been loners in a, in a lot of ways, like really kind of um, have that idea of just like, I can do this by myself. I don't need to, you know, I was never a member of any of the course groups or anything like that. I'll just have my book. I'll live out in the middle of nowhere and that'll be it. I was like, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful how it's funny. Of all the places I've gone and all the people, I, I hear all the stories in all the different languages and all the different cultures. And it's really all the same story. You know, you, you come here, you kind of go for it with all the gusto, and then at some point, you don't know what point you reach, it's, I can't get no satisfaction. You, there's a discontent that comes after you have seemingly attained some level of success in the world. I mean, in fact, all of us live together, and there's just four of us here, but there's a whole group of us. Uh, you know, if you, if you went around and you just listened to everyone's story, you know, it's always, you know, what Jesus says, 
you may have realized one thing that every time you have a, a, achieved a goal in this world, it has not satisfied you. And then the ego is forced to shift to other goals. And we're pretty, some of us have hit a lot of goals. We've built a lot of skills. We've got a lot of education. We've been great business owners, entrepreneurs. You know, it, it comes in d different ways. Like, like uh, Frances was more like a, a genius uh, student. So she got, you know, she had her choice of many, many schools and she went to the University of Chicago. Uh, but she, you know, there were many, many schools that wanted her. Like, oh, genius mind, we want that in our school. And, and Suzanne, she was like living the high life. Uh, jetting around and you call yourself like a Connexian? No. <laughs> Connexican. Connexican. Because you just absolutely loved Canada and Mexico. You were just jetting around and this and that. And she actually came out here to this canyon in high heels and a Lexus. That's how she arrived. Not in a four-wheel drive. <laughs> she came out here because the high life was not uh, satisfying her. She had what all the world says, you know, all the goodies and perks that people work so many years so they can have uh, build the nest egg to get that. She had all that. Yeah, she had yeah, all this that. is what's so cool about this <laughs> thing is it's like a lot of us have had like really, really beautiful lives in the world, right? Yeah. But there was a ceiling, right? There's always a ceiling. You you know, you, you go up and then it satisfies for a minute and then it goes back down and then you go back up and it satisfies for a minute but it's just like this up and down but it never gets past this one point the glass of ceiling. seeming happiness yeah. and then what I've noticed with this is the joy just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and there's no ceiling on it there's no ceiling on this of course there's no ceiling on this because we are we're preparing the mind to fall back into the abstract light there's no ceiling on this so it's like really the best thing ever. You know, yes, there's a lot of uh, excavation that needs to happen. There's a lot of undoing and there's a lot of tears and we've all been, you know, a lot of us have been through a lot of dark nights of the soul. But there's no ceiling. I, I can see that now. It's like it just gets, it, it just gets more and more and more expansive. So it's, yeah, yeah there's no, there's just no ceiling yeah. on it. It's a marvelous group too. If I, I think of our, our messengers, like if they went down, you know, Andrew and John, Luke, Matthew, Mark, if you went through the 12 apostles, if you go through the messengers, we've had, we've had CEOs, corporate, high life, brilliant student, uh, uh, I remember, and not finishing high school, uh, being abducted, um, in the teen years, drop high school dropouts, engineering, wizard mind, prostitution, drug addict, drug addict obesity, <laughs> you know, I mean, just the whole swath of the human nature, you know, wasn't there something about the, the de seven deadly sins? Sloth was one of them, always like sloth. <laughs> Ooh, that doesn't sound good, whatever, sloth, just the name, you know, but we, we've got more than the seven. We've had a composite of all kinds. They come from all walks of life. The ones who've been the achievers, the ones who've been the dropouts, the ones who've been the drug addicts, the ones who've been prostitutes, and the ones that are like the, the class, you know, the, the top of the class. And, and all, we've, got, we've had the whole panorama, and we've all been called to wake up. We've all been called to let go of the mesmerism of the world and the, the good and the bad and the attractions and the repulsions. And wow, we've had metaphysics like A Course in Miracles guiding us. And it's so rich, the tapestry is so rich to see all of those things be used by the Holy Spirit with such care and love. We, we've been able to open up and start to listen to each other Listen to our hearts. Feel this huge love that's there. It's like that joy that gets deeper, deeper, you know, down, down, deeper, deeper into more and more joy. And, and this is a wake-up call. We were, 
talking, Jennifer and I, a couple days ago about this idea of, of enlightenment in the next lifetime, future enlightenment. And, you know, we're just called, we can join, we're just feeling like we can do this. We're all in this together. We are doing it, and it is happening, and the miracles are happening. And I remember with the Strawberry Fields, uh, Nelda came to me during Strawberry Fields. It's a full name is Strawberry Fields Forever, like the Beatles song. Let me take you down, cause I'm going to Strawberry Fields. Nothing is real, nothing to get half about. So we go there, and Nelda, who just came on a bus from Kentucky and who got off the bus, got here, and they put her right out. Hey, you can help over there and did this after she's been in the bus for three days. She was just, <laughs> and, but anyway, during, I saw her after like two or three days of the festival and she was like, we're waking up. This is real. Oh my God, <laughs> this is really, she was, her eyes were this big. She was like, she just, yeah, she just got a bus ticket, came out here, drove, and three days, and you know, just like, oh my God. And, and we can feel it. We can feel the Spirit coming through us with such intensity. And isn't that wonderful, you know? It's like, isn't it great when you wake up in the morning, you know, you've got that an, another day to forgive. Like, what is this day going to bring? What miracles? What spectacles? spectacular expanses am I going to discover today? How different that is from, from that disillusion point that we all had in our lives where I heard the word check out, it's got, there's no point, what's the point? You know, we always reach that point where it's like there's a sense of meaninglessness, a sense of dissatisfaction, a sense of hopelessness. And isn't it great to be lifted up beyond that and then, once you have that miraculous turnaround, to, to extend it, to give it away, to set all the captives free. Not one prisoner can remain, Jesus says, if you would be free. To set all the captives free, to have all the prison bars drop down. Lila didn't mention that in her story, but she actually had a point where she was in her cabin and she thought, I'm in prison. And she, <laughs> and she found herself it's a matter of, was it a couple days later? No, it was that same day. That same day, she had the thought, I'm in prison, and she left her cabin to go out, defiantly rebel, and she went and she found herself in, in jail. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty good, that shows you how powerful the mind is to have a thought, I'm in prison, and then to find the body of Lila in jail. That was part of the undoing of the defiant. That, there's nothing like humbling, like finding yourself in jail. That, that was good too. It all gets used. It all gets used. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember thinking that day, yeah, I'm feeling in jail, and then just that rebellion and out. And, you know, it's just stopped and had a beer after shopping all day, and then had another beer and go out, and there's a cop right, right behind me pulling up and then driving, and he stops me and calls me off to jail that night. Car impounded, all this stuff goes on. But I had a mystical experience in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just thinking, I feel in jail in my mind. And I'm sitting in the little jail cell going. <laughs> but yeah, I really did. I was, I, I just really was uh, in this state of, found myself in this state of mind where I was kind of like, peering out at myself again. I was seeing myself sitting in jail, you know, and, and then I saw just flashbacks of three times where I was really rebellious in my life. One where I was a baby. I was in the crib and I had my hands on the bars going. <laughs> and another one where I was having a tantrum in the yard where I was kicking and screaming. I was sitting on my butt and I was just kicking and screaming. And it was, and there was another one I was like, oh my God. This, is, this has been the ego at the helm, kicking and screaming all the way, this rebellion. And I got to see that. And after I saw the third you know, clip in my mind playing out, I, and then this that happened, it was like just tears, just tears. I, I don't want to rebel anymore. 
I just don't want to rebel. <coughs> So yeah, it was just such a beautiful experience. It all got used yeah. so miraculously. It's absolutely everything gets used. That's the best part of it. It all gets used for the same glorious purpose. <laughs> and we all have a good laugh at all of it because you know, no matter how extreme it was, you know, some people tell me about their near-death experiences or all these major extreme stories, and and it's like a it's just a harmony of contrast experiences from the mystical to the absolutely, utterly insane. And, and then the choice becomes clearer, that there is a choice. We can choose the divine. We can choose the divine. We don't have to choose the insane, no matter how sneaky the trap is. And I think, I, I just have such appreciation for everything, everything that's come has just been such a contribution, like a symphony actually. And it's made it clear for us, you know, that, that we can make that choice, that heaven is a decision I can make and and we're really going for it. Yeah. yeah. It was really beautiful after that experience. I, I had to do community service as well. And um, so someone had to drive me into town so I could do community service. And I had so many holy encounters with all the folks that work in the in Duchesne down there and the very last day I got to hang the signs catch the spirit so it was like that was one of the projects that I had to do the final project like catch the spirit is that like Duchesne is that where they that, that was signs you had to hang all over the city the catch flags the clear down the main street all the way <laughs> clear down the main street every sign <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, and and you know the I had to go to an assessment class too, and the assessment class was all about right choice. So I had so many miracles in every one of those classes about right choice, and it was the, I I don't remember them all now, but. It was like I was just sharing them as I was coming back from these classes going, oh my God, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me through this teacher in the class about yeah. discernment and yeah. wise choice. So it's all about undoing, unlearning, dismantling. It reminds me too, because you, you lost your driving privileges for a long time. How many months? Uh, 18. 18 months. Yeah. And then Jesus comes along in the Course and he says, what do you want? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind, for both you cannot have. That's what he says in the Course, for both you cannot have. He's clearly pointing us to take his Course and follow him in a journey deep down into the mind to freedom of mind. And Jesus you know, gets to the point in the Course of saying, you are the one, you are the Holy Son of God Himself, but most of the Course is saying, you are a slave, just like Morpheus tells Neo, a slave, a prison in the mind that you cannot smell or taste or touch. You are, are a slave in the prison of your mind. And that's what most of the Course in Miracles is aimed at, just to first convince you that, that you aren't a free human being, that you don't live in a free country, that you don't have free speech. We just watched that Jack Reacher movie and it was such a great commentary. It was like Jesus was coming through Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher. Look at the people, they're, the lives they lead, they're in debt, they're, they're enslaved in corporations, in jobs, in families. They're just, they're crushed. They, if they could live it all over, sure they would live a different life because whatever decisions they make, they feel imprisoned in this world. And, and, and Morpheus and Jesus are telling us it's an imprisonment of the mind. And we're being given a way out that works. Miracles, forgiveness. It really, really, really works. But we have to go for it with everything we've got. You can't hold back. It's not like you can play with some of the deck. You know, I remember there was one time when I, I was struggling with specialness and relationships and family relationships and everything. And, I remember saying to Jesus one time, I said, can you help me? I feel like I was in a cobweb. I'm just spun and just, I'm like a bug that's just been spun 
and I feel so entrapped. Can you, can you give me something, something, help me in some way to get out of this? And he said, yeah, it's like the card game. I said, card game? What card game? He said, 52 card pickup. He said, when you came to this world as an ego, you dealt out your parents, you dealt out all your relationships, your teachers, your, your spiritual teachers, your, your relationship, your partners, you, your neighbors, you dealt all of those out. And so, I said, wow, that's amazing. I said, so you mean that every relationship that I've ever had was dealt by the ego? He said, yeah, for the purpose of guilt, to keep you guilty. The ego peoples its world. The ego, God didn't create these people. The ego peopled the whole world. It's all was spun out in the unholy instant. In every single relationship that David has had has been a part of this scheme to keep you guilty. Even though the Bible itself says God is no respecter of persons. God didn't create persons. Persona is a mask. God didn't create people. So the whole scheme, the ego peopled the whole world for guilt and hatred and fear. And so I said, well, what, how do you get out of it? And he said, well, it's like 52 card pickup. Pick them all up. Pick them all up. Don't keep putting them out there. I want you to get them all back in the deck. And I want every last one of them back in the deck. So I did. I, I did it and I stuffed a few in my pocket. And I gave the deck back <laughs> to Jesus and he, uh, 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 that's not the way that it works. I said, but that's my grandmother. She's been like a saint. You can't certainly want her back. And uh, he said, oh yeah, give me Lillian too, give me her. All the, even the saints in your life, the ones that that pulled you through, the ones that seemed to be the, the ones that saved your life. I want them all. You've got to give the whole deck back. And so, okay, pull the cards out, every last one, and get them. And he said, now give me the deck. Give me the deck. Give me all of your relationships, without exception. So, I did. And he said, now I will redeal from a new purpose. Thank you. I'm going to redeal the deck and all your relationships from this point forward, all your relationships will be miraculous. All your relationships will be glorious. Everyone that's going to come to you is going to be like an angel. And you're just going to thank God Almighty for these relationships because they are going to be your mighty companions, and there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be some that are going to come that, that were from the deck that were dealt before, but they're going to be completely changed, completely made new, freed from the past, freed from grievances, joyful, reflecting your whole mind, blazing in glory. And, and listen, there's going to be a lot more cards because you had a very limited deck, very small, limited deck in your little shy world. I was voted most, David was voted most quiet in his senior class, very shy, kind of a hermit, loner type. He said, there's going to be a lot more cards coming, so get ready. And of course, you know, there's been thousands in all around the world. And, and really, that's how it works. We have to let go of everyone in our life, no matter how attached we are to them, no matter how much we thought they've helped us or hurt us, we were mistaken because of the purpose for which the world was made was the ego's purpose. Guilt, fear, shame, pain. Of course, all of those relationships, even the sweetest ones, there still was a, an edge to them. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, but there was that time. <laughs> You know, there's always an edge, but when we're, we are reborn, when we give it over to the Holy Spirit, everything changes. And that's the way my life has been, my experience of life, my experience of the dream has, has fundamentally shifted because my purpose has been shifted for me. 
And it's for all of us. It has to be the same. It's not like God has this one or that one. God doesn't have chosen ones. You know, all are called. And the Course says, you know, few choose to listen. But are you going to be content with even that metaphor of few choose to listen? Who's got to listen? <laughs> I've got to listen. I've got to follow. I've got to be the one. You know, like, like Neo was, became the one. I've got to be the one that steps up and says, I will answer the call. I can't, if I'm waiting for my brothers and sisters and still looking out on the screen, oh, we're going to wait till I get it. I have to have an example. You know, we've had plenty of examples. You know, we were talking about Martin Luther King, we were talking about Gandhi. You know, there's, there's been so many examples that light up our hearts, but we still have to accept it for ourselves. We have to be the one that accepts it. Because we won't experience it in our awareness unless we accept the atonement. And to me, that's the most realistic goal there is. All these other goals, we've, we've tried it all before. We tried it on our own. We tried the lonely route, even in the Matrix, when he's ready to get out of the car. You know, and he's, it's a rainy, cold, dark night. And he's ready to just get out of that car. And Trinity's like, Neo, you've been down that road before. And he has to admit, he has. He's not going down that road. He's not getting out of the car. He's going to go meet Morpheus. <laughs> you know? And we've, through A Course in Miracles and all the different pathways that we've come, we've, we've stayed in the car. We've gone for the meeting. We've had it. And, you know, Given a choice between the red pill and spiritual awakening and the blue pill, you know, we have not done the cipher. You know, why, oh, why didn't I take the blue pill? We've taken the red pill. We've, we've gone for, show me what's down the rabbit hole. Show me the deepest aspect of my mind. Show me the way to spiritual awakening. Have we regretted it at times? There have been times where we've, we've regretted that we we took the pill. We've had cipher moments, why oh why, but, but we've never seriously considered that there's a way to go back. We've all gone t too far. We've gone too far down the rabbit hole now. We've seen too much. We've peeked behind the curtain, in the wizard analogy. The Toto has pulled the curtain and we've seen the wizard. And he's frightened and he's scared. And we're going to forgive that tiny mad idea that's frightened and scared. Pulling all those levers and on this big screen, smoke going everywhere. We're, f we're, we're not going to do that anymore. We're all in this together, really. And we're soaring. So this is, I just think this is, take full advantage of this because this is what it's all for. There's no other roads to take.